your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rimes. That's right. Welcome in to the Consumer Quarterback Show with Brandon Rimes. Brandon Rimes is out today. My name is James DeJerome. I'm the producer here of the Consumer Quarterback Show. We got a great show for you today, uh, just like we always do. You know, the, the Consumer Quarterback Show is, a, is Brandon's uh, brainchild. He kind of had this great network of professionals he was working with as a real estate professional here in the Bay Area. And he thought, man, if I could extend this network for folks out there, they could get the benefits of all this information and knowledge that I'm getting from these folks, these professionals in the Bay Area. I would love to do that. And then he created the Consumer Quarterback Show. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to provide some information, some value to you to help make your dollar go farther and help you have a little more knowledge when you finish listening to our program. So Brandon put the show together and we started out, if you're listening to us on AM860, we want to thank you for tuning in every day. But we want to offer you a number of ways to enjoy the Consumer Quarterback Show. You know, the Consumer Quarterback Show now streams live. If you're home on a Tuesday or Thursday in the afternoon, check us out. Just jump in the live stream. We're on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube. We're doing our best to get the show out there everywhere. Of course, our YouTube channel is going great. Anytime you miss the Consumer Quarterback Show, you can always go to our YouTube channel and check it out. And again, for all you radio listeners, check out the video side. we got a lot of cool things on the Consumer Quarterback Show website, which is ConsumerQB.com. So between the YouTube channel and Binge Networks carrying us on the smart TV apps, and of course on Sunday, we do the 1025 uh, FM re radio replay. So the show is really growing and we're putting it everywhere for you because we really think we're providing some value to you and the feedback we're getting is great. So in addition to creating the show for you folks out there, Brandon rounded up a bunch of sponsors and we have some great sponsors here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. I want to tell you about the Bill Maher Beach Resort. Clyde Smith is the general manager of the Bill Maher Beach Resort. He comes on the show all the time. Tell us about what's going on down there. And if you folks have been to the Bill Maher, of course, you know what a great hotel it is. It is not like a Hyatt or a Hilton or another cookie cutter kind of a hotel. It is a very unique property. Uh, it, all the rooms, about 80% of the rooms face the beach, face the water. And it's, the beach is so big down there, it takes you about two drinks to walk from your room down to the water if you want to take a swim. Get in touch with Clyde. Book directly with Clyde. The Bill Maher Beach Resort is the official hotel sponsor of the Consumer Quarterback Show. As I mentioned before, Brandon is the owner of the Platinum MVP team. He's a Keller Williams agent, and he's got real estate properties for you. Even in this time of real estate scarcity throughout the Bay Area, Brandon has always got properties for you. Johnny is our producer here on the TV side. He's going to throw a few properties up on the screen for me. Here's one at 13204 Fawn Lily Drive in Riverview, 4,511 square feet. This is a 6.5 with a three-car garage. Community includes a clubhouse, pool, walking trails. Man, what a sharp-looking kitchen upgrade, new counters. The cabinets look really good. We talked to uh, Chris Robinson from About Face, one of our partners, and I always mention him uh, when I see new countertops and kitchen. I'm always like, well, that's the key to selling a house. 13204 Fallen Lovely Drive. Check it out in Riverview if you want to get into the Riverview area. Here's one in Tampa, 304 East Waters Ave. This is a, a, a land, and this is a building opportunity for you. He's got about half an acre, 95 feet along Waters Ave. About forty to 50,000 vehicles a day go, go by this lot. So 304 East Waters Ave, if you're looking to build in Tampa, Boy, that's an opportunity for you right there at the corner of Branch and Waters Ave. Okay, so Brandon and the Real Platinum MVP team still having opportunities for you, even in this time of real estate scarcity. Check them all out online. Again, ConsumerQB.com. Okay, we have a lucky, uh, a great break today. One of our, our longtime uh, friends of the program, someone who you know as one of the longest-running radio hosts here in the state of Florida, Joe Pippen. He's an attorney here in the Tampa Bay area. Joe, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show again. I love having you on, Joe. I don't know much about this area, and I don't, fortunately, it seems like most folks are a little undereducated in this particular area, your area of expertise. Before we jump into really what estate planning is all about and what folks need to know, I want to hear about the radio show. When did you start the radio show, Joe? No, 1984. So the uh, Tampa Bay Magazine wrote an article about the longest-running uh, continual show in Florida, which is uh, start, so 37 years now. Wow. I go in every week, usually to multiple stations. I was nationally syndicated for a while. Uh, and just uh, want to do a public service of answering legal questions. Right. So they line up on the phones and start throwing questions at you. Right. I never have to prepare because I never never know what I'm going to be asked. So, <laughs> But I just uh, I know most of the answers because I've been asked a lot of the things multiple times. Once in a while I get a question I don't know. And, of course, I say I don't know, but I can get them help. Right. So. It just shows you how starved people are for this information. It's something that weighs on people's mind a lot. They want to make sure they have their ducks in a row. Right. And one of my uh, favorite, um, so there's a, I call it 80% educational and about 20% entertaining. Right. Because I do get a few entertaining <laughs> calls once in a while. Uh, one man called recently and wanted to know, he says, tell me about citizens' arrests. He says, I want to go down and arrest the mayor of St. Petersburg for uh, running a sanctuary city. 
mm-hmm. and he's violating this unconstitutional what he's doing. I want to go arrest him and take him to prison. What's going to happen? I said, well, the only thing that's going to happen is when you get to the prison, they're going to arrest you <laughs> <laughs> uh, for kidnapping or something. They'll right. probably think of a few more charges, too. So don't what do a, that. What about folks like me who see a lot of law and order on TV and think they understand everything and come at you? Oh, no, no, sir. You, I know this because I've seen it on television. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. No. <laughs> They're not going to solve the case that quick. <laughs> yeah. But uh, So when you are, get involved with somebody in terms of the estate planning side, you've got to ask them a bunch of questions to find out what they have or what they don't have, right? Because you have, they have no idea what, what, what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, I like. usually start our meetings with a, with a series of questions. Now, Would you like for me to put you through <laughs> please, that? Please, please. I know I'm under, <laughs> uneducated in this area. Well, are you married? I am not. All right. Do you have children? I do not. All right. Then I would ask the size of your estate. I'm not going to ask you that on okay. there. Okay. So that's an important question, though, because, you know, if you uh, won a lotto and you mm-hmm. had millions and millions of dollars, the plan would be different. And if you have a three to 500000 or even a million dollars, it would be different. It could be a different answer. Sure. Well, then I ask you, and people with, you're probably one of the more difficult type to deal with because you don't have children to leave right. money to. Right. So the question becomes, who do you want to leave your estate to? And a lot of people just don't know. If they don't have a spouse or children, uh, you you might tell me brothers or sisters or nieces or nephews or something like that. But usually, uh, and the most difficult question for if you did have a minor child is who the guardian would be. Mm. Because that's one of the questions. Who do you want to raise your child if something happens to you? You know, who do you want to manage money for the benefit of your child, and who do you want to raise the child? Just know? before we get too far down that road, when you talk about uh, using a family member, in my situation, that makes perfect sense to me. I have uh, sisters with kids and all that kind of thing. Uh, how often do I have to alert that family member that they are the, the selection to avoid some conflict amongst other family members? Well, I would generally tell the family members that you've appointed to be in charge You know where your documents are, because they've got to find your documents, number one. Mm-hmm. And number two, do they really want the job? And But your documents always name a backup. Okay. Or two, sometimes two backups, a primary and a secondary backup. So you have a plan in place in case they can't do it. You know, they're ill or they've moved or they're going through a divorce themselves or somebody, you know, there's some reason they don't want to do it or can't do it. There's a backup plan. Joe, and the, just, just before we get too far, how much work is required on their part? Say I, they are named as my benefactor. Well, their job basically is when you die to take a death certificate, collect assets, you know, figure out what your assets are, mm-hmm. how they're titled, uh, follow the instructions in the will or trust that you have, and pay your bills and do your taxes and put a notice in the paper about Okay, so it's quite a bit more than I realized you know, it was. Creditors. Okay. So if your sister was going to be your primary beneficiary, I mean, she's going to get a big pop. So she should be worthwhile. Her, right, but she right. would hire an attorney, though, to do most of the, uh, you know, the court work and mm-hmm. so forth. Now, do folks ever ask you, "Hey, is my estate big enough to warrant all these expenses, potential expenses, uh, as far as settling, dividing it up?" What if, what if your estate doesn't quite reach a level where you feel like it has value to put these people through that kind of uh, work? Well, just a minimal estate, uh, the probate fee could be twenty five, thirty five hundred dollars, with five or six hundred dollars in court cost. Okay. So if you did a trust, even if you had a smaller estate, uh, you would avoid that. Well, and the trust does that in what way? Well, a trust avoids probate. That's the primary reason people do trust. Okay. Now, I'm obviously, <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about, so tell me about probate, Joe. A well, probate is the proving process of getting assets out of a deceased person's name. I see. So if you died with a home mm-hmm. in your name, or if you died with a, a, a brokerage account just in your name, well, now you, you died, so it's in the name of a deceased person. So the only one that has the power to deal with it is who you've named as the personal representative in your will. So the person you named your sister, let's say, is named the personal representative. So she would bring me, if she was going to use me, she would bring uh, your will, the original will, and a death certificate. Mm -hmm. I would file that with the court and petition for her to be appointed the personal representative. Well, that whole process is probate. Now, if you had a living trust, the asset is not in the name of a deceased person. It's in your name in a living trust. The trust is still living. Mm -hmm. Your sister would be the backup trustee. So your sister could take the death certificate to a bank and become the trustee of your uh, accounts to pay your bills and make the distribution. Uh, If you had a quick claim deed of your property into the trust, now she can sell that very easily. She can Mm -hmm. list it with Brandon very quickly. Yeah. 
and then your sister would have the power without probate to sell the property. Uh, it makes it quick and easy. But what I'd really like to avoid is putting a burden of settling my outstanding accounts or having collectors come at them for a, a something that I didn't take care of. So, you know, I think of it as a, as a burden already. I certainly don't want to make it worse than it, than it has to be. What mitigating steps can I take to, to make the? I mean, that's what that's where you come in, right, Joe? Yeah, well, the easiest thing to do to make the steps easier and no probate and quick and easy is to have a trust, really. Okay. Because that takes the court out of the system. That takes the court fees. It's a four or $500 filing fee. You have to put an ad in the paper. You have to be bonded. Probate lasts six months to a year. With a trust, it all can be very, very quick. We've had uh, states uh, be settled within a month very quickly. And outside of being contested by the siblings or, or the spouse, you know, people involved in, in the uh, account, that's really the only thing that's going to extend the, the problems in that situation you just explained, right? Yeah, well, there's not there's not many people that contest, as you would think, though. Okay. Uh, and the only vil- really valid reasons to contest a will or a trust are undue influence or incompetence. Incompetence, you prove with two doctor's letters, the person, you know, was out of it and didn't know what they were, couldn't sign a legal document when they this during the time frame the document was signed. Now, undue influence, I uh, would work this way. Suppose you brought your sister. So let's say you have uh, five siblings. Correct. And you brought your sister with you to the meeting, and she you wound up leaving her everything. Mm-hmm. Well, that would be a good allegation of undue influence because she was with you. So and she a, was present. Another and sibling would say that that, that influence resulted in her uh, getting a larger percentage. Yeah, and they could very well win. So it's always better not to bring an interested party with you when you're doing your estate documents, if they're going to be favored. Well, as you can see, there's quite a few details that I didn't think through and that perhaps uh, you have not thought through. That's why we bring Joe Pippen on the show here. When we come back, we're going to talk to more, more through these scenarios. You know, there's so many scenarios out there that you have to consider uh, because anything could arise. And if you're not prepared for it, that's when the, the, the you know misallocation of your funds is going to happen. You certainly don't want that to happen. You've got a lot of folks that you're looking to take care of you know uh don't go anywhere we're going to come back with joe pippen and of course we have our feel good story of the day just like brandon does every day this one's a great one about steve and aisha curry feeding millions of people during the pandemic don't go anywhere this is the consumer quarterback show this is work done and you're listening to the real estate quarterback show hosted by my man brandon rhymes to get in touch with brandon call 813-670-7372 online at consumerqb.com Hey, Brandon Rimes here, Real Estate Quarterback Show, and talking about the Pinellas County update. Here's the updated residential listings and sales for Pinellas County. At the end of December 2020, the latest statistics from the GTAR, uh, the Real Estate Board, we have over 2,985 properties available for sale at the end of December 2020. Now, out of those 2,985 properties, 2,107 sold. So we're up 172 sales. That's plus 8.9%. So the inventory is down, sales are up, and it's a great market to be in. You had 2,107 sold divided by the number amount of listed. It's a 71% absorption rate. And if you divide that out, it gives you a 1.41 month supply of inventory, meaning it's a strong seller's market. So we would love to talk to you. If you're thinking about listing a property, we help sellers maximize the exposure on the sale of their real estate properties by featuring them on our show. Give us a call, 813-750-0550. Call or text 813-750-0550. And check out ConsumerQB.com. That's ConsumerQB.com. Thanks so much. Make it a great day. And we'll see you at 4 o'clock drive time on AM860 The Answer. My friends, when choosing a listing agent to sell your home, their track record is critically important. Dennis Prager here for Brandon and Lindsey Rimes, owners of Platinum MVP Team at Keller Williams Real Estate. They're consistently rated by the MLS in the top 1% of all Tampa Bay realtors, and that's a big deal. Brandon and Lindsey are always among the top realtors in the state. Call them today at 813-750-0550. Find them at PlatinumMVPTeam.KW.com. We'll be right back. 
You're listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at ConsumerQB.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. That's right. Give Brandon a call if you want to check out any of the properties you hear us pitch on the Consumer Quarterback Show. Or if you want to check out the show, of course, ConsumerQB.com, a great place to run into all our sponsors and partners for the Consumer Quarterback Show. This particular segment is brought to you by Golf Cart Depot or Discovery Golf Cars. You know, everyone's getting a golf cart now. They're not just for golf. Uh, I see kids playing, pulling their skateboard all around the neighborhood. Of course, Halloween, it seemed like everyone trick-or-treated with a golf cart. Everyone's got a golf cart, and uh, Golf Cart Depot is the place to go. Discovery Golf Cars, check them out online. They sell new and used. They can come out, service the thing. They finance everything you want in a golf cart. Golf Cart Depot, also known as Discovery Golf Carts. Check them out online. And, of course, they are a great sponsor for the Consumer Quarterback Show. Tell them that you heard about them right here on the show. And we've got two properties for you in this segment as well. Again, Brandon is the realtor of choice for the Bay Area. He's the owner of the Platinum MVP team. He's got an opportunity for you in Clearwater Beach, 1010 Bay Esplanade, Bay Esplanade rather, 3,150 square feet. It's a 4-3 with a two-car garage. Once again, updated kitchen White cabinetry and countertops, just like Chris Robinson will tell you, is the new look everybody wants. 1010 Bay Esplanade. If you're get, looking to get into Clearwater Beach, great opportunity. Private apartment, private sun deck. Get in touch with the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty. Brandon has opportunities for you. And again, check him out online if you need to at ConsumerQB.com. Before the break, Joe Pippen was trying to help me and my family hold on to my uh, resources and my funds. Because when I, if I had a, an accident or something was to happen to me, who knows what would happen to my house and my home and my, all the different things I've collected over my life. I've got to take an active role in protecting those assets so that we brought Joe on to help explain those kind of things. Before the, before the break, he had gone, gone through a scenario where I was deceased and had left my sister in charge of what, uh, my assets there. And she was trying to uh, litigate through all the different things that, that go on. He mentioned probate and some of the things that happened with that. I had to ask Joe about folks that didn't do, weren't good storage with their money. For instance, I have outstanding fees and different uh, auto debits that are going into all my accounts. If I was to pass away and my sister was unaware of all the financial activity I was involved in, it's quite possible that I could keep accruing fees and fines even post-mortem. Mm-hmm. Well, your sister, um, I would tell her if I was representing her, get your mail directed to her. Right. So you change the mailing address. You go through all of her financial papers and determine what the debts are if you can. I mean, you do your best. Mm -hmm. You get the mail. You see credit card bills and things like that. You go through your important papers. If you've signed a loan or a note or a mortgage or something, you know, and there's a debt. Oh, there's Her job is to find all those things. Uh, on the same level, though, she we put a, no, a notice in the newspaper. If it's probate, um, creditors have a time limit to file a claim against the estate. If it's a trust, they have a time limit to file claims against the estate. So you look at your past tax returns, see what your interest deductions are, things like that. Mm-hmm. You, try, you try hard to figure out everything you have or you are involved in and just do the best you can, basically. I mean, you, you usually it's, most of the time it works out fine. Sure. I just got the feeling, that because I'm suspicious of a lot of these folks that are uh, trying to collect debts that don't exist from me, <laughs> that they would continue to harass her in, in my, you know, as, as a result of her taking over from my well, assets. Well, a common strategy is when people file uh, a claims, if you have any doubt at all, just object to the claim and make them prove it. Explain that a little bit, Joe. All right. In, in probate, uh, you put a notice in the newspaper where creditors can file a claim against the estate if okay. the money's owed. Uh, but on the other hand, representing your sister, if she had any doubt at all, this doesn't look like a legit, you know, who's this guy, Brandon Rhymes, and he mm-hmm. says you owe him, you know, $10,000. 10, right. So you object to it. Right. And make Brandon prove it. I see. So he has to prove you owe the money. He has to come up with a promissory note, maybe a schedule of payments or something like that. And the, and the court determines the validity of those documents. Yeah. And if you, if you come to an impasse, you know, they, they can take it to court. Okay, but you ask the probate judge, you object to it, and ask the probate judge to dismiss it unless they provide uh, evidence to the court. Now we've all have uh, heard scenarios, whether they're from Hollywood or other places, where somebody passes away and there's the family starts fighting. They they're going to fight about who he really told me I get it, and you told him I got it. Uh, a lot of times they're producing uh, documents that counter contradict one another. Uh, and it becomes quite a mess with each each family member having their own attorney, and, and they kind of get into the squabble. Uh, can you talk a little about how that generally turns to uh, hurt the, the entire value of the estate, right? Because someone's going to pay all those legal fees as they qu- quarrel about this 
the the estate is actually reducing in value, is it not? Well, the last will is the last will if there's a will. So if there was a valid will that's not contested for undue influence or incompetence, that would be the last will. Other sta- uh, verbal statements are not valid. You could even make a vi- you could you could make a video will, mm. and that's not valid. Really, it has to be in writing. So, have you seen that play out where someone yeah, came well, in? Yeah, well, some people come in and want to do do a, a video will to support their last will or trust. And a lot of times, you know, you might tell them, no, let's not do a video will. Because, you know, the video will might prove, it might be enough in the video will with you stumbling around with mm. words. I mean, I don't say it quite like this. But, right. you know, you you don't make a good video presence. You're not convincing you you wander a little bit in your thoughts. You know there might be enough in a video will to make it even easier to challenge. Wow, I never thought of that. Uh, so I really don't like video wills. If a person has a well drafted out script and they're pretty vocal and coherent, and uh, you know can talk with them just like you and I are talking, well that's fine. Okay. But if an uh, an elderly person kind of stumbles around a little bit and maybe they stop and hesitate and you, you wonder what they're going to say, you know you never know. So I usually don't like even to do a video will. Mm -hmm. I've seen some movies where there have been some great video wills, but they don't work in real life a lot of times, (laughs) you know, so. I just think, uh, I think of the scenario where you have your everything in place, you feel good about your documents and everything, but then there's a change you want to make. There's a new birth, a new grandchild, there's a new something, a a particular piece of art or something that you want to just give to this Mm -hmm. person. Do you have to tear up all the, in other words, to make an amendment, does that uh, that cause us to start over again and and kind of could someone contest that, hey, that, that was an illegitimate document now because that last change wasn't proffered through every channel? No. No, if you do a trust, you can do, do a simple amendment. We charge like $150 to do an amend a trust. You usually would amend uh, an article of distribution. You have a change in the article of distribution somehow, so you just amend that article and change the distribution. The most common changes are who the trustees are. You want to change in who the mm-hmm. going to be the trustee when you die and what the what the distribution is, and those are easy changes to make. If you have a will now, it's called a codicil. It's not called an amendment. And you either do a codicil that makes a change in the will, or most of the time we just do a brand new will. The fee's the same. So it's easier just to do a brand new will that spells everything out. And the, the uh, amendment or addendum has to be filed with the same person who did the original will? Or can that how No, does it's that not work? filed anywhere, really. Okay. It's just kept with the person's uh, uh, other important papers. If you have a safe deposit box, we tell clients you need to keep your originals in a safe place, a safe deposit box or a wireproof, uh, waterproof, fireproof mm-hmm. box at home of some type, some secure place. And now in the virtual world, I imagine there's a cloud-based secure system or something like that? Where yeah, you can but have... you can't keep originals there. Mm-hmm. So the original wills are very important. You have to follow the original with the court. I see. So you have to safeguard to safeguard the originals. So in that process where you make an amendment, that change has to be, it's not It's not immediate. It's only immediate when the actual document in the court. Yeah. I see. Well, no, the amendment, you don't have to file uh, amendments with the court. In fact, wills don't get filed until death. I see. And trusts hopefully never get filed. With the, that's the privacy of a trust is it doesn't get filed. It doesn't become a court record. Okay. Uh, wills, you have to follow the original will with the court for it to start the probate process. And if you you have to follow a will uh, when a person dies, there's a statute in Florida that if you're in possession of someone's will, you have 10 days to follow the will. Okay. So there's some, some guidelines and some deadlines that you have to follow that, to make sure that you're not making a mistake. We certainly want to have Joe expand a little bit on that. We're coming into our, our break, Joe. When we come back, I was going to ask you a little bit about the, the – we talked about the family squabbling. What, what kind of settles those or what is the hard – document that kind of puts an end to that kind of squabbling or how can you remove folks from that kind of thing okay so we'll visit with that a little bit with attorney joe pippen when we come back don't forget we've got a feel-good story for you brandon always wants to inject some positivity into your day we've got folks that feed 15 million people during the pandemic out there on the west coast don't go anywhere this is the consumer quarterback show i want to encourage everyone again if you hear a property that you're interested in check us out online if you want to get in touch with a partner do business with the folks we do business with any of our sponsors consumerqb.com is a great resource for all our partners and a great way for you to check out the show and what's going on with the show Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back and visit with more with attorney Joe Pippen. This is Chris Voss, former FBI lead hostage negotiator and owner of the Black Swan Group. And you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show hosted by my friend Brandon Rice. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com.
All right, let me know when you want to proceed. Alrighty, then uh, everyone, please stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. You're listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. Online at ConsumerQB.com. That's right, ConsumerQB.com, a great resource for you to get in touch with our sponsors and look at all our partners. All the folks that come in take time out of their busy day to share that information and provide some knowledge for you to make your dollar go farther. That's the whole idea behind consumer advocacy here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. Brandon wants to provide some value and make your dollar go farther in the workplace. He's rounded up some great sponsors. The sponsor for this segment is Replenish IV Solutions. Really unique business concept. We're all worried about our immune systems nowadays with these viruses going around. Well, Replenish IV Solutions has a great way to keep you infused with vitamins, and they'll give you an IV drip directly into your system that'll provide all the minerals and nutrients you need to keep your immune system boosted. In addition to uh, their locations around the Bay Area, if you cannot get to them, they come to you. So get in touch with Steve and Lisa Gunnan at Replenish IV Solutions, the science behind feeling good, and they will make sure that they can uh, see you in the clinic or at your place. Great business idea, great partners of the show, uh, Replenish IV Solutions. Okay, two more properties for you. Again, Brandon is the owner of the Platinum MVP team. He has properties for you, even in this time of scarcity throughout the Bay Area. Johnny's going to throw one up. If you're looking to get into the Newport Ritchie area, here is a 5727 Biscayne Court. This is an 874 square foot uh, apartment, two bedroom, two bath, two screen balconies, new appliances, community pool and clubhouse, got a marina and covered parking. So if you're trying to get into the Newport Ritchie area, we've got a, a condo for you. 5727 Biscayne Court, Unit 201 in Newport Ritchie. Great opportunity there from the Platinum MVP team. Here's something in Tampa, a 3-3 with a carport, large fence, private backyard in the Seminole Heights area. So 1813 East Knollwood Street in Tampa. So if you want to be downtown or close to downtown in Tampa, get in touch with Brandon. He's got one 1813 East Knollwood. Great opportunity for you from Brandon and the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty. Great show today. We've been visiting with attorney Joe Pippen. He's been educating me a lot about his state. I have no uh, knowledge about that. Luckily, I don't have much estate to give, so I, it's not going to take too hard to break too long to break it up. But before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, people contesting wills and and different way, things you can do to ensure that your will and or your trust is is respected. And it just occurred to me that nowadays, you know, with technology has given us all these new things. We have fingerprint scans and retinal scans and ways to get into our car with codes. Is it still come down to a signature? If someone walked into you with a, a will and said, this is his will, I've got a signature right on this document, how do we determine which will is correct if someone's going to be unscrupulous and try to present a, a false document? Well, yeah, the last will is the last will. So if someone thinks that's not an, uh, the correct hand, hand signature on the will and it was forged, well, then you have to hire somebody to uh, a handwriting forgery expert. Now, as you age, I imagine your handwriting changes, your signature changes over time. I could see some wiggle room in this thing. Yeah, but see, a will has to be witnessed by two people okay. and it has to be notarized. So, you know, a notary is going to notarize. So we have to get a person's ID. We have to check off whether we knew them or whether they presented an ID. So, mm-hmm. uh, and I have I will copy the driver's license and keep that part of my file. So I think it'd be hard to contest one of my wills because we go through the steps my witnesses are my staff. I'm the notary. I'm sure we it is. We have proof of ID. So just close uh, the loop quite a bit. Perhaps but, Joe... but also there are forms you can buy through the Internet and try to do it yourself. Now, mm. most of the people are going to make a mistake on trying to do it themselves. And then all of this proof and files and all this about who the witnesses were and the notaries, who the notary was and whether anybody forged anything be much much easier if they try to do it themselves. So, we talk m- at nauseum on the Consumer Quarterback Show about working with professionals. Whether you're going to sell your home, whether you're going to hire a roofer, whatever you're going to do, make sure you're working with a professional. Check his background. Get into his uh, documents. Talk to folks that work with them. Make sure you have a reputable person that you're involved with. If there's no question there's a lot of fraud uh, uh, opportunity out there. You certainly have to be diligent about that, regardless of if you're hiring somebody for home services or something as drastic and, and, and large. There's also a difference between uh, contesting a will and trust. So if you contest a will, you can just file a claim in the court. And as we talked about, if I were doing, if I was uh, on the side that was receiving the objection, I just uh, object to the objection and make them prove it. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and that's a fairly easier process through the probate system than it is to try to sue a trust. If you're going to sue a living trust, you have to actually file a lawsuit. There's no uh, just filing a claim with the court like in probate because the probate system is already there. Much, much harder to to uh, sue a trust because then you have to actually do a lawsuit against the trust. So you're going to have to hire some attorneys and spend some yeah, money. Yeah, spend some money. So it's harder, much, much harder uh, to sue a trust. So as you see, there's a lot of terms that uh, a layperson may not be familiar with. We've talked about a little about probate and trust and will. Uh, it, you need to have a real definition of what these things are to find out what's best for you. And of course, again, working with a professional like Joe is going to make sure that you don't make a mistake. But as he mentioned, the online approach, uh, we've seen the DIY approach go wrong just in terms of the home services, pest control. You name the amount of vendors that have come in here and said, boy, I had a horrible scenario where I got a uh, customer called me and said, boy, they tried to do it themselves. They made a mess of the situation. <laughs> Let's not do that with your estate, please. Let's get in touch with Joe and make sure that we have all our I's dotted and our T's crossed. Joe, you must have some stories, though, about uh, misrepresentation or, or fights or squabbles or someone that tried to cheat the system with a false document or maybe created a false scenario. Well, you know, Mark Twain said, you never know a person to share an inheritance with them. <laughs> and that I see that true all the time. And a lot of times uh, family members will just fight over, you know, mom's sewing basket or thimble collection or dad's... Uh, hole in one plaque or you know there's some things that you never would think that meant anything right. to someone and they're the ones that things that the people want personal things so a lot of times personal things you know are not titled and a lot of personal things really aren't worth a whole lot they just have some sentimental value right and it seems like that uh that causes the biggest fights among family i can see that. now if a person listening wanted to make sure a family member got a particular uh the family bible you know, everybody wants a family Bible. It got mm -hmm. notes in it and all kind of historical things stuck in the Bible and and so forth. And it it means a lot to uh, some of the family members. So when I'm doing a will, there's a clause in the will that authorizes a separate writing provision. And I give them a separate writing form, actually, where they could itemize personal things. And that's going to take away the fight. You know, the grand yeah. piano goes to the child with the daughter with the piano lessons, you know. Uh, and you can itemize personal things. Uh, very special personal things. And there are a lot of historical items in families from one generation to another. And you want to entrust maybe something very, very special to somebody you have in mind that you know will protect it and save it and pass it on to their family. So you can make a list of special personal things, historical things, family things, diamond ring, engagement ring, um, father's pistol that he had in, when he was in the military. Things like that. You make a, you, you, there's a special form to itemize special non-titled personal things. To get, it stops a lot of the contesting about yeah, who gets Yeah, I would say that that's something I wouldn't have considered and certainly would not have gone into the minutia of every little item. And that's exactly what I could see happening with yeah. people. Cause well, it's not, every other, it's not every little item, though. It's maybe a handful, maybe five or ten items. At the well, like you said, usually. whatever creates sentimental value for someone is certainly beyond, you know, I, we can't always understand what that might be. Uh, I was just made a note here. If someone had a estate, they had a home, and they the uh, benefactors said, let's sell the property. Given our real estate market in Tampa Bay and the trends in real estate and the values changing, well, I could see that uh, a particular family member might need that money or want that sale executed immediately, whereas mm -hmm. someone might say, well, we're going to lose mm -hmm. a lot of value if we don't sit on the... Have you ever seen that play out with the real estate asset? Yeah, the person in charge, though, is the person nominated to be in charge, the personal representative of the will or the trustee of the trust, and that person's in charge of making that uh, that decision. Okay. Now, usually I advise them, if you can get, you know, communication solves a lot of problems, just can continually communicate with the beneficiary, see what they want. If there's a disagreement as to selling now or selling later, then, you know, get get a, something from a realtor telling you that now is the best time to sell. Mm. So you have uh, to make a case. Yeah, make a case for yourself. Understood. So that's just something I thought about it timing-wise in terms of, uh, you know, you can't always plan for someone's uh, demise and certainly not the value of their current real estate at that time and, and the value. In there. And there may be kids in the will that are juvenile at this time mm -hmm. that would stand to benefit greatly if we could wait mm -hmm. and get the sale well, at max you know, value. one of them might want the condo on the beach. Sure. And there's three children, and one really wants it, and the other two don't. So if there's enough money in the estate, the one could take the condo as their share. Let's say it's a $900,000 condo, and there's $2.7 million in the estate, just to give a okay. real easy example. Right. 
Um, so the one can take the nine hundred thousand dollar condo, and the other two can take nine hundred thousand in cash or stocks or, uh, you know, whatever can be appraised to equal their same values. And if the family really gets along, uh, they can one can take nine hundred thousand dollar condo and give the other two mortgages. Right. So it, it, Joe's talking about, communi- as you mentioned, communication being the key. Everyone's got to talk to each other and understand where we are. And certainly uh, addressing these issues prior to the event uh, is going to be key. So you have an idea of what, what, what the deceased wanted, what everyone agreed on, those kind of things. It's the families that are uh, separated that come together at the time of the, of the death that don't really get along or don't, haven't communicated in a long time with each other. That's the, that's the scenario that's going to make the worst possible uh, yeah. settlement. Estate planning gets interesting if somebody, if a couple goes through a divorce. Because a lot of times one spouse will be given the right to live there for a while. And they're also charged with, they have to sell it within a time frame. Mm-hmm. A lot of times that happens. So what happens if they don't, they don't really want to sell it? <laughs> and do disruptive things along the way to uh, turn people off that might want to buy it. I didn't and you see that, that happen, sure. right? That happens. That happens. So then you, you have to become aware of that somehow. I mean, the, the, and then you have to take corrective action. You might have to get the person out of the property while it's mm-hmm. trying to be sold. Have you seen private investigators uh, deployed in, a, in, in this scenario where they're trying to decide what someone's really using that property, or what the value really is, or what, who, what they're doing, or are they trustworthy? Yeah, we sometimes you have to use private investigators for certain things. It's not. I don't think it's real, real common though. I had a problem. I had a, a situation recently. It might be interesting to talk about. So what happened was a um, a wife died. She was the owner of the house. It's like a second or third marriage. Okay. Her husband stayed in the house, and uh, he allowed his daughter to come live there with him, and she was a heavy smoker. All right. And this lasted for a couple of years. So we went from a, a nice house to one you could hardly walk in without gagging from the you know, right. smell of the smoke. So actually the uh, – and then when the – so the person had a life estate, and then when, uh, when that person died, it went back to the daughter who was the sole beneficiary of the property. But now right. she gets this property back that's worth less. Mm-hmm. Because it has to have to be super deep clean to get rid of the smoke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they put a claim on the estate, and we actually wound to uh, wound up paying to have the house uh, completely to a deep clean. I'm curious what the dollar value of that would be. I wonder. I think uh, it w- it was really s- severe, severe, severe. Wow. So uh, I think it was like maybe twenty thousand dollars to right. do er- to get in those walls. Yeah, and- carpet, paint. You're talking about the whole thing. Yeah. Holy cow! Did never yeah. A lot of these things you're never going to consider unless you sit down with a professional and talk about what could happen or what should happen. It sounds straightforward. I'm going to leave this to her and X to Z, and then in the real world, as we know, things don't happen. The values change. Uh, siblings don't get along. Uh, things are contested. I just thought whatever you determine as values as best you can, you've got to communicate at that point with everybody that's involved, right? Yep, that's right. That's the key. All right, Joe Pippen, uh, ask an attorney. He's going to be with us one more segment. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to finish up with Joe and our feel-good story about the curry serving up 15 million meals during the pandemic. Don't go anywhere. we got a feel-good story for you. Check us out online at ConsumerQB.com. Hey, this is Grant Cardone, and you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show, hosted by my friend Brandon Rhymes. Do not touch that dial. I'll come right through the radio and grab your throat. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. Hey, Brandon Rimes here, owner of the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty with your real estate market update for Hillsborough County in Tampa Bay. Residential listings at the end of December 2020 were 2,634 properties active as listings. That is down 2,498 year over year, 2,498 less listings. That's down 48.7%. Coming down and looking at the solds, at the end of December, we had 2,505 properties sold. That's plus... 262 sales plus 11.7 percent so the sales are up inventory's down 95 percent absorption rate in hillsborough county and a 1.05 month supply a strong seller's market as well in hillsborough county reach out we'd love to talk to you if you're selling 
buying, selling, or investing in real estate. My wife, Lindsay, and I own a top 1% ranked real estate team with Keller Williams Realty. 813-750-0550. Call or text 813-750-0550. Also, you can see the website, consumerqb.com consumerqb.com and we would love to help you win i'm a certified negotiation expert and we can help you win in your real estate deals if you're buying selling or investing and of course tune into our consumer quarterback show four o'clock drive time right here on am 860 to answer fm 93.7 on the fm dial thanks so much have a wonderful day my friends, when choosing a listing agent to sell your home, their track record is critically important. Dennis Prager here for Brandon and Lindsey Rimes, owners of Platinum MVP Team at Keller Williams Real Estate. They're consistently rated by the MLS in the top 1% of all Tampa Bay realtors, and that's a big deal. Brandon and Lindsey are always among the top realtors in the state. Call them today at 813-750-0550. Find them at PlatinumMVPTeam.KW.com. You're listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at consumerqb.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813 670 7372. That's right. Give Brandon a call. He's got real estate for you all around the Bay Area as owner of the Platinum MVP team. He's a Keller Williams agent here. And, of course, Brandon has put the show together for you to create some value. We want you to check us out all the time, whether it's on the radio or online or a YouTube channel, because we feel there's great value for you on the Consumer Quarterback Show. He's got a sponsor for this segment. It's Brothers Easy Moving. Brothers Easy Moving became the official moving sponsor of the Consumer Quarterback Show, and they moved Brandon into his new home. So he got to see these guys work firsthand, and I did as well. They worked well into the night and uh, had no idea what they were getting into with that move, but they knocked it right out and became the official moving sponsor of the Consumer Quarterback Show, local or long distance. Great five-star reviews. Check them out online, Brothers Easy Moving. And, of course, our last property of the show, Johnny's going to throw one up for you. Brandon is the owner of the Platinum MVP team, and, of course, he has real estate opportunities for you throughout the Bay Area, even in this time of real estate scarcity. All right, and we're hanging there, Johnny. What you got? Here's one in Seminole. If you're looking to get into the Seminole area, 213 Dogwood Circle. This is a two-bedroom, two-bath, covered carport, exceptional water views. You're right by the beach. So it's a little bit of an older community, 55 plus, pool and shuffleboard available. If you want to get into Seminole, he's got a spot for you, 213 Dogwood Circle. Get in touch with Brandon and the Platinum MVP team. They do such a good job with real estate. And of course, all those properties available at ConsumerQB. Dot com. All right, before the break, we were visiting with Joe Pippen. Attorney Joe Pippen comes in and educates us all about estate law. We, I just had some questions for, for Joe about different states and taxes and deadlines because we see in the real estate side, folks have come down here to buy a property because they, they can avoid a certain tax or they're trying to get away from a certain tax in their jurisdiction. Have you seen people choose to move to you because you do a better job or you're cheaper or our state's different? What are the differences in terms of location? Well, uh, the state of Florida has no estate... Uh, tax. So you can die in Florida. There are no estate taxes to be paid. Unlike others. Unlike others. And the the federal exemption is 11.4 for everyone, no matter where you live. So there are few, a lot fewer people have estate tax issues. Some states have a state uh, estate tax, and mm-hmm. Florida doesn't. So that's one big advantage. And Florida also doesn't have a, uh, a state income tax. So yes. a lot of tax reasons to move, move to move to Florida. Sure, sure. Um, so as far as estate planning documents, I've had a few few uh, clients who have financial planners here in Florida and in, you say, New York in this particular case. Mm-hmm. And this, my fin- financial planner told uh, one couple of what my fees were to do, to do their documents, and they chose to – they were quoted like a $5,000 fee to do a trust package, I'll call it, in New York. And I was going to do it for eight ninety five. So they they came down and let me do their estate planning package for them. And then they had four thousand dollars to spend on vacation there you extra. Go. So, so <laughs> something to shop for you guys out there. Yeah, it's not shop. just something you uh, just jump into and f- call the first person you know. You look around and see who can do the best job for you. Of course, uh, Joe Pippen's been doing this for such a long time. His long running radio show, uh, providing people with knowledge and information all the time. I want to I want to hit everybody with our feel good story real quick. Again, Brandon wants me to inject some positivity into your day. Every time we do the show, and this one is a great one because we've had some uh, health, uh, I'm sorry, some some food issues, uh, some scarcity during this pandemic. So I don't know if you're familiar with Stephen Curry, he plays for the Golden State Warriors. He and his wife, Aisha, have served up 1,500, 15 million meals during the pandemic, actually. Steve and Aisha Curry's foundation has served 15 
million meals to families in need during 2020. Three-time NBA champion Steph Curry and his wife launched Eat, Learn, Play in 2019 to focus on helping the youth in underserved communities. Before the pandemic, the foundation provided meals for approximately 25% of Oakland school children who have food insecurity, but that need had grown exponentially. He said, I've seen what COVID has done to the community at large. There's a steep learning curve to get into this business and set up to do this kind of work. We didn't have to go through that because we were already up and running. So he said, amidst the uncertainty and chaos, we're in a position to make an impact. So the foundation went from feeding 4,000 families a week in February to providing 300,000 meals a week. Eat, Learn, and Play also partnered with Chef Andre's World Central Kitchen, to procure meals for more than 130 Oakland restaurants. So there you go. Feel good story. Steve, Stephen Curry doing good things out there, feeding folks in the Bay Area and all around the country to make sure that uh, the pandemic doesn't claim too many victims. Thanks to Joe Pippen for coming in today. we got a few minutes left, Joe. I just want you to hit some uh, – encourage folks to, to do this, as I always do, because I, I realize this is an underserved area uh, of loss especially. But also how to get in touch with you, the best way to – how far – how busy are you? How far out do we have to schedule to get your, your attention on this kind of thing? Well, you could probably call my office to, today and see me next week. Okay. I mean, so I have a toll-free number for the audience. It's 1-800-226-3529. That's 1-800-226-3529. Mm-hmm. If they like my free estate planning poster sheet, which I've offered before on the show here, it's a, a large poster sheet on estate planning, five articles on one side, all of our contact information on the other. They could either call or send me an email to joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y-P-I-P dot com. Great offers. Lots of information on that sheet, Joe. What, what made you put that? that, that that's an all-in-one kind of a document, huh? I've had that. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've improved it and modified it, but I've been doing that same type of sheet for over 20 years now. Yeah, that's a great asset. If there. they'd like to learn more about the radio show, my website is com, and you can put slash radio, and you go right to um, all my shows. And what time does it, does it air? What time does it tune in? It's seven. Uh, it's eight o'clock on Saturday morning on five seventy nine ten eight sixty nine thirty. That Salem family of stations. Uh, so All over the eight, place. Eight o'clock. Yes. Ask an attorney. Longest running show in the state of Florida, and great information and knowledge for you. Joe Pippen does that, just like the Consumer Quarterback Show wants to be your advocate. Joe has certainly done that, going out of his way to provide some information and knowledge for you on the radio. I just had one. I just, you know, we thought it, we, we mentioned Tony Soprano, the the actor who played Tony Soprano, uh, Gandolfini. He died without a, a, a an estate plan in place. Uh, can you think of you, you said the Michael Jackson one before? I remember that was a crazy. Well, Michael one. Jackson actually did a trust, but he he didn't put his ranch there in California in it, so the ranch wound up going through probate. And how long did I can? It seems like that process. I was hearing about it in the news for quite a while. Yeah, uh, probate. Well, yeah, probate can last a long time. And then on Michael Jackson, of course, uh, there are a lot of claims made on right. his that take. It's going to take forever. And plus, you know, he's got uh, he's got record sales continuing forever and ever and ever. And getting those flowing into a trust as well is a, was a job. What a challenge! I had no idea what to think about it that way. He's going to generate revenue forever. Yeah. So there's got to be somebody handling that. Yep. And there's tax to be paid as well. Yeah. So you can name trustees, but eventually you might need a corporate trustee. You know, that's going to be around. Yeah, I can't imagine. Boy, what a difficulty! And all the attorneys involved, and his. What does he have? Ten siblings. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So everyone mm. wants to, to figure out what's best so for them. The Jackson Five Plus Five, right? Yeah. I mean, what an unbelievable scenario. I, I've I've heard a few. I, any more that you can think of? Again, we talked about Gandolfini a little. Aretha bit. Aretha Franklin died, I think, without a will. Another massive star with a huge uh, income potential after death. Uh, Prince. Oh, yeah, that's the Prince one. Prince died. That's right. Yeah, Channel 13 came out to interview me when Prince died because they thought that would be a good example of, of dying without a will and how important it is for people to do their estate planning. I can imagine. What a, what a mess. And where to even begin? All the attorneys getting together on that one probably took a year to iron that out. Well, more than that, I think. I think it's still ongoing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And uh, we talked about the state of Florida being a, a little bit of an elderly community, you know, our, our population kind of skewing that way. Does that impl- influence your business at all, I mean, uh, in terms of where you'd, where you'd set up a business? Well, as far as just to set up an estate planning business? Well, or? just the folks out there that want to know, is it, com- is it competitive down here in your, in your field, Joe? Oh, very, yeah. There's a lot of estate planning attorneys around. Um, and you choose, and I would suggest that you, people interview a few, see yeah. who you're compatible with. And, 
Check and out a, fees. A great schedules. way to check out Joe is this weekend, as it is every weekend, on his radio show, Ask an Attorney, Attorney Joe Pippen. Thanks so much for coming in. My Always pleasure. a great source of information for us, as we hope the Consumer Quarterback Show is for all the consumers in the Bay Area. Don't forget to check us out online at ConsumerQB.com. You've been listening to The Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rimes. Whether it's real estate, consumer, or financial advice, let Brandon call your next play. Contact Brandon Rimes at 813-670-7372. That's 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. And join us next time for The Consumer Quarterback Show.